friends and welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. This month we are doing Christmas in July. So we've got a lot of uh, fun gift project ideas for you that you can think about now, maybe get some supplies now. So in this video we are going to be making some more pyramid pouches. Now this is the one I made that's sock size. It's a 10 inch panel, but I went off script here. So we are going to go back to the original pattern which is the Atlantis pouch by Needle and Anchor Patterns and we're gonna follow the pattern this time. <laughs> so there are four sizes. We've got three and three quarters, the smallish medium is four and three quarters, the medium is five and three quarters, and the large is seven and three quarters. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the large and the medium and see which one we like better as far as just accessibility, um, ease of use, things you would put in it, like what's the most practical size for us to make. So you've got two fabrics on the outside, but we're just gonna be doing one. And we're also gonna attach a finger loop so you have something to hold on to. Yeah, so this is the present idea for this week would make a great gift and it's fat quarter friendly. So we're gonna go over what that means, what is a fat quarter, all that fun stuff in this episode. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and grab yourself a water or a cozy beverage if you're not in the heat like I am. <laughs> Curl up and let's start making these bags. Let's talk about fat quarters, baby. Okay, so here we have some fat quarters. So all these projects we're doing are fat quarter friendly, so I thought let's just have a little refresher about fat quarters. Um, you've got your different price points. So you've got your super expensive fat quarter bundle from Moda Fabrics. This one is the Lori Holt Granny Chic Bundle. It came with 32 fat quarters. Um, and this is the Lori Holt Prairie Bundle that I think also came with 32 fat quarters, but we've used some of these for the piggy pouches already. We also have a pack here of Moda Fat Eighths, which are not going to get you as much yardage, but are still useful for things. And this one's called All Weather Friend, and it's a bundle, let's see, 9 by 22 and I can't remember how many are in here, but it's probably like 32. So what they do is for the fancy designer fabrics, uh, they have a whole range, what do they call it, a collection. You have a collection, and what they'll do is, besides just being able to buy yardage in these collections, you can also buy packs. So you can get a charm pack, or a fat quarter pack, or a fat eighth pack, or a half yard pack. Uh, it's just a way for you to get the whole the whole collection so that you can mix and match things. These are especially good for quilting, but also good for our projects here for holiday presents or any presents. Um, so that's a pretty high price point. I can't remember how much I paid for this. I'll put it on the screen, like a typical range for like a fat quarter bundle from a designer. And if you don't want to invest that much, if you're just getting started sewing or you just want to sew a few things for a present and you've got your old sewing machine from Walmart and you just don't want to deal with all of that, we have the cheaper option. So on the cheaper option, you can go to Joann's. They have a whole fat quarter section right below their regular fabric and they've got lots of great fabrics you can mix and match. These are usually, what? 250 I think, um, but they go on sale a lot of the times. Sometimes they're on sale for two dollars, one dollar, so this is also a good option. They're just sold individually, so if you want you can just buy two of them, experiment, see if you like the concept before you dive all in. Uh, at Joann's they also have uh, fat quarter bundles, but this is just a bundle of five. This cost eleven dollars, it was probably on sale though when I bought it. Um, which makes these a little teensy bit over $2 each for the fat quarter, which is not bad. This was another pack that I bought that I've already used some out of. So yeah, they just have a nice range. These ones are all lemons, because, you know, lemon tree corner. So that was nice. I made an apron out of those. So, you know, you don't have to be a quilter to invest in fat quarters. 
they're really handy for lots of things, whether you want to make the lavender sachets or anything else that you would like to make. So we don't have a lot of these left for our piggy pouches. So I might dive into these guys for the piggy pouches because I don't have anything set to do with these. Um, these are just in my stash. So since we have one here, we will just open it up and you can see what it looks like. So these are typically 18 by 22. So 18 and this one's more like 21 and a half. So, you know, you can't really trust that measurement. Sometimes it's going to be a little shorter. So if you need exactly 18 by 22, um, you better measure first before you get those. So what we're going to do right now is the pyramid pouches. So I'm going to go through my fat quarters and pick some out for those. This is probably the best, the best idea for those. We've got our flamingos. So I can do one as the exterior and one as the interior. I can match these all up. These are very pretty. Oh, I like these. I'm probably going to have enough to do the interior out of several of these. So what I will probably do is pick these as the exterior, these as the interior, and hope that I have enough here for um, an extra set of lining. So I'm going to set these aside. And we'll get back to these for the other projects we're doing. But right now we are doing the pyramid pouches. So let's get some fabric cut out. So there's four sizes here. We've got a small, smallish medium. And then we've got a medium and then a lining large. So four different sizes to choose from. Well, I appreciate the way she perfectly laid out the pattern pieces where even if I'm cutting this one a quarter of an inch over it perfectly lined up with that one so that I didn't have to make a bunch of extra cuts that was nice of her. I'm trying to decide whether to make every single size of this because there's four different sizes versus just making the one I think is going to be the size I like. Um, I don't know whether to just make every size as an exercise for you guys so you can see what they look like. Yeah, I'm not sure. And then I'm already cutting out pattern pieces I don't need. So part of me is like, I just find some scraps and make some extras, I don't know. I'm thinking for these smaller ones, maybe we should use the number three zippers. Um, I've got a lot of colors of those. So basically we need the number three zippers for the piggies the coin purses and these. The piggies, the coin purses and these. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, I'm thinking we might use these for the little ones. So here are our four sizes. I'm thinking the small is way too small. Here we go with our Goldilocks moments again. Um, the smallish medium might be interesting with the with the number three zippers. I think I could get away with the medium one. And the large one just seems very close to our sock bag, which was 10. Although this one, <clears throat> even if you pump this up to eight and a half or nine, would still be fat quarter friendly. So this is this is a good one for presents as well. So yeah, these three. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we do one at seven, right? Seven, and then this one would be like at six. 
it's not that big of a difference between those two. Yeah, I feel like this one's too big, the small one's too small. So we will just go with that. <coughs> we will try those and see how we feel. Okay, I had a good thought here, which is I can take my one, two, three, four, five fat quarters. I can cut my seven inch pieces um, and then I can mix and match them to be linings and, and exteriors so that uh, I get the most out of these fat quarters. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix and match them. I did want to point out that the fat quarters always have like a selvage edge. So you just have to be aware of that. You're going to be cutting that off. So while it says it's 18 by 22, it's never exactly 18 by 22. This one is like a little over 22, but we're going to be cutting that off. And then it's a little over 18. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And it's not necessarily cut exactly square either. And then we just um, shrink it with the starch. So there's that part of it too. It might not be exactly the right size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut Ooh, let's do some math, shall we? Okay, so if this is 18 inches by 22, and I'm cutting out seven inch pieces, will we be able to get the right one out of? Okay, so we should cut it out of the 22 side. We should cut seven. Well, we're gonna cut seven out of both, so I guess it doesn't matter. We do need a finger loop as well, so we should be able to use the extras from this process for the finger loop. So we got seven, 14, 21, correct? And my multiplication tables. 21. Okay, which gets us just there. I'm just shy of 21. So that's where we need to be. So I'm basically only wasting this on this edge. Oh, I think I need a new blade in here. And then we're going to go the other way. Um, it would be smart of me to stack these. You don't get as precise of a cut when you stack, but I think in this case everything's close enough together where that will work. So the edges might not be perfectly aligned, but we are going to have a quarter inch seam allowance, so we just want to be pretty close. What I could do is I could even up this edge first before we start. Do that and then line this up. Oh, I need I need uh, zipper tabs as well. So that's what we can do with all the extras here. One, two. So I've got these extras, which is kind of annoying. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that gets us um, three bag panels out of that. And then I don't necessarily want to cut down everything because these scraps are good enough to use for uh, a sachet. Yeah, it's four inches. So these are good enough to use for a sachet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some zipper tabs out of this. So like that. So two by two zipper tabs. Is that two? Two inches. Yay. Okay, so that's good. And then we need a three by six. And that's not six, so I shouldn't have cut it that direction. We need a three by six for our figure loop. Okay. Wah, wah. Well, we can still get one sachet out of this. 
yeah, if I'm super careful, I should be able to have like extra things out of this. So three by six for our finger loop. And then I'm probably gonna need the same thing out of this. Let's see, because we're I get three bags out of that. So that's three, 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 three. Yeah, I might need more finger loops out of this. So that's nice that we can get that many pieces out of there. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the seven inch one first. And then we will try the six inch one as well. Um, I can pretty much make a seven inch one out of all of these. I think what I will do though is go ahead and <clears throat> let's just go ahead and do two so that I can do the seven inch and see how big that is first before we cut all the fabric. So I will be back with you in a moment. Okay, one other thing I didn't talk about was size. So we've got these seven inch panels, right? Now look at these flamingos. Um, I could fussy cut each flamingo, but then I'm not gonna be getting the amount of seven inch panels I just got out of the other piece. So we have to either accept that the flamingos are gonna be cut, and they're also gonna be sewn into seams. So even if I fussy cut these, they're still not gonna be perfectly visible. So you have to think about the size of your pattern. So if you're gonna pick a fabric with like a really big size element on it, then you're gonna have some trouble. So you're better off picking something like this where the pattern is very small and having that be your having that be your little pouch. So that goes for coin purses, that goes for the um, lavender sachets we're gonna make, pretty much goes for anything that you're gonna, you're gonna need to think about what size your actual pattern is. Ugh, I feel like I need to put a new blade in there. So we will see what our panels look like. It looks like I'm gonna have a whole flamingo on most of the panels here, so that's good. If we are mixing and matching these, I can pick the better panels to be the exterior, and I can pick the not so good cutoff flamingos to be the interior. So that's another thing we can do to fix this issue. Okay, so I've basically got, see that one's fine. They're all pretty much fine, I think. Yeah, I've got flamingos visible in each of them, so that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and make one bag out of these. I did decide to go with the number five zipper after all. Uh, I think it's just gonna look better. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go with a hot pink thread because I kind of want the hot pink on the inside. So it might be slightly visible on the outside, but that's what we're going to do.
So, as you can assume, I didn't leave as much of an opening as I would have if I thought about it sooner. But it should be enough for us to get our fingers in there and pull this right side out. And just as I suspected, the smaller you get, the fiddlier it is. So you, you really have to watch your lines, make sure you're sewing it correctly, make sure you're lining things up correctly, because any little thing that you do in this case is going to make a big impact. It's also harder to turn out. So that, ooh, that is a nice one. Ooh, our zipper pulls look great. That's good. We're gonna poke out our corners. If I can get in there. So I really want those defined corners. And we're gonna press this to extra define. So if we press this, it will extra define that corner. And then I'm gonna sew this down. And we have our pouch. Very cute. I don't know what you would use these for, other than maybe like a pouch to hold your cords or something else on vacation. Not sure what you would use this for. The finger loop is just fine. I don't think it looks too big for this space. We've got our flamingos are visible, so that's nice. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out. Um, I really want to cut all of these the same size so that I can mix and match them. And I do like the seven inch. I don't know. I don't know that you would need a six inch for anything. Um, and the pattern would have to be even smaller on that bag, <laughs> these bags. So I'm going to continue with these guys just because I can mix, mix and match and I think that would be good. Okay, we have all of our finished pieces here. So I am going to lay them out and see which ones are linings and which ones are uh, exteriors because I only have a certain amount of both and I don't want to attach the fusible fleece until we know what we're doing. I think these just work better as linings and same thing with the leaves although I might want one of these to be an exterior. And so that's it for this episode. Let's take a look at our finished pouches. We did them all at seven inches. So here are the two with the uh, pineapples. And then they have different linings and different zippers. Actually, these ones have the same zippers. We did two of the flamingos, and those do have different color zippers. Two of the other flamingos, and they have different color zippers. And then one with the leaves. I really, I'm glad I picked the leaves to be at least one of the exteriors. So very nice. And then that one has the flamingos on the inside. So I think this is probably the most useful size. And then we have a little finger loop. Um, not sure what you would put in here. <laughs> Maybe some makeup or cords for travel or I don't know. You tell me, pop it down in the comments below what you think would work for these bags. I mean, it's about the size of my hand, you know, so think about that. I, I think anything smaller than this is just gonna be like, what do you really put in there? I mean, even with this, I could probably fit, I could probably fit like my ID, my cards, my keys, my phone. I don't even, let's see, where's my phone? I don't even know. Yeah, my phone doesn't even fit in here. <laughs> But maybe I could put my cards and my keys in here and then just put the phone in my pocket. I don't know what would be useful for these. 
but they're super cute. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Um, and then the next thing, what are we doing next? We're doing the makeup pouches next and also taking our trip down to San Diego. So I think the trip will be next and then the makeup pouches. So stay tuned for another wonderful project and I hope you have an awesome week ahead. Love you friends. Bye.